Well, I should be live. Michael Brown here, streaming two, three places today. Michael Brown Optical Art on Facebook, my personal Facebook page, and my lenticular art and artists group. So if any of you are out there, welcome. Today I want to do a little something different, which is to talk about 3D lenticular. In the past, I've shown a lot of my artwork, which are the kinetic or the changing motion lenticulars. But I haven't done a lot about 3D lenticular because it's difficult, if not impossible, to show a 3D lenticular on a 2D computer screen. But it's an interesting topic. I enjoy it. And so I want to start off with uh, telling you about my first experiences with 3D lenticular. And they involved a camera like this. It's called a Nimslo. You can see that on the front of the camera. And it has four lenses on it. And I actually purchased this camera when it was brand new in the 1980s. As I recall, I was just out of college, had my first job, and I was reading popular photography magazine. They talked about this amazing camera, the Nimslo, that would actually take three-dimensional pictures. And it, it captured my imagination. I thought, wow, I could make, you know, holographic type photographs. And I was reading about this camera probably for two or three years before it even came out. It was always being written up in the different magazines. Now, Nimslo, uh, that uh, the name Nimslo is from two people, uh, Jerry Nims and Alan Lowe, and they were co-creators. And Nims was sort of the marketeer, and Alan Lowe was the technical person. And they'd actually worked on this technology for probably 10 or 20 years, had numerous patents on before they commercialized it. Now, this camera would take 35 millimeter film. It was a point and shoot. It uh, also came with uh, external flash if you want to purchase that. And when you were done making your pictures, you would send the film off to a processing facility here in the United States in Atlanta. I'm not sure where they uh, were sent overseas. Um, so they would develop your pictures and then send them back. And the pictures were something like this. Now, again, you're not going to see that, um, the depth of this. But this particular picture is a lenticular picture. There are actually 169 lenticules per inch, so it's very fine. And if you were in front of it, you'd see there's a, a depth, or if you could see it in 3D, you'd see there's a depth that comes off the surface and recedes behind it. It has probably like an inch of depth, but scaled down, it's, it's pretty cool looking. So that was really neat. Now, when I bought that camera and started using it, I remember one time there was a Halloween party and I took the camera to the party and I took snapshots of of people. And then a few weeks later, I was showing them to my friends. And I remember this one girl said, wow, these are almost like 3D. And that was the problem with the Nimso. It had depth, but it didn't have tremendous depth. And unfortunately, the company only lasted two or three years before they went out of a business. I mean, I don't know if they were ahead of their time or if it was just too much technologically to handle, but they they didn't last long. So that's the Nimso. Now you can buy these on eBay. And, and years ago, when I bought this, I think it was over $200 in the 80s. Years ago, you could get them for $20 or $30 because you couldn't send the film up for processing anymore. But a lot of young people are buying these cameras now and have raised the price on eBay back into the hundreds again, because they'll make animated GIFs or animated GIFs, however you want to pronounce it. And so they'll take the four images and they actually wobble back and forth on screen. And I'll show you what that's like in a moment. So I like to do three to lenticular. I'm putting my camera on a slide bar and actually sliding it across. I, I take a single camera and I take a one meter slide bar and I capture numerous frames of my subject. And that works good when you have something that's stationary. But one of the advantages of, of the Nimslo is you can just push a button and take all your pictures simultaneously. So I, have come up with this little rig. It's actually not that little. You can see it's significantly bigger than the Nimslo. Uh, this has four Sony cameras on it. And uh, this box below here is a trigger box. And by firing a remote release, which is in my hand here, uh, through that trigger box, it'll fire all four of these cameras simultaneously. So they're all in sync. Now, I like that system because it allows me to shoot raw files, not just JPEGs, so I can adjust the files after the fact. And so I'm going to switch over to my screen for a moment here. 
And so this is actually showing my Instagram page. And I have a couple images here I took a few days ago. Well, well let's look at this one first. So this was done in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. This is a fountain. And what you're seeing are the four individual pictures. And I have it basically rocking back and forth. So it's aligned on the head of that uh, statuette. And then as you view that, you can see the different perspectives. Now I've always found with moving imagery like this, if I close one eye and look at it, I can actually sense the 3D in there. There's something called motion parallax and the way our minds work, it gives you that 3D illusion. Now I'm gonna go to the next one. So this one, similar situation. Oh, it's not really animating, is it? Let's see here. Let's try calling it up this way. Okay, so this is Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, the boats. And I used that multi-camera rig you saw before. And I fired the shutter and I captured these four frames. Now, besides animating it like this, I can take those four frames and actually make a 3D lenticular print. And so at this point, I think we will switch over here and I will move that. Uh, over on my light box, I have some samples I made. So I actually took those four images and I interlaced them. And then I printed those out and I can actually put a lenticular sheet on that and make a depth print. So let me walk over to our light box here. So I made a couple prints of an experiment. This one here are the four frames interlaced. Um, I have a 60 LPI sheet, which is pitched to 60.1 lenticules per inch. When I put that on and line it up, you know, I, I get good 3D. Now, one problem with just using four frames, whether it's with the NIMS lower with this, is as you move back and forth, there's just a tendency to get a little jitter as, as your eye is switching from one frame to another. So what I do to minimize that is I, I make tweens in a program called Adobe After Effects. So what I did was I took these four frames, I brought them into After Effects, and I made a composition that would have 20 frames. And I told After Effects to slow down these frames by 25%. So in theory, it's gonna take my four frames and make 16 frames. Well, it doesn't work exactly perfectly like that. But what I did is I uh, did the uh, time expansion, took my four frames, made the 20. I looked at all 20 of them and uh, only 14 of them actually showed displacement. So I got rid of the six that didn't. I took those 14 frames, put those in After Effects. And now when I take this lenticular screen and line that up, I get the same amount of depth I had before but now this is completely smooth. There's no jitter, it's just a terrific picture. So this is uh, taking four frames, converting to 14 frames, interlacing those 14, printing them out, putting the lens on it. And uh, unfortunately, you can't really see it because the camera only has one eye, but if you're standing right in front of this with two eyes, you definitely see the depth and the smoothness. So that, that really turned out terrific. Now, let me come back here. All right, so I'm back. Uh, that's really what I want to share with you today, a little bit behind the process of taking uh, 3D lenticular photographs. So I can make a lenticular print that has that feeling and illusion of, of depth when you look at it straight on. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, if you want to put those in the comments, if you want to let me know where you're viewing from and put that in the comments, that would be Terrific. So I will look at the comments and see if I see any. And I do not. So with this, I will be ending this broadcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.